Hello, my name is Charles Workman. I'm a soil fertility specialist in the Department of Agronomy and Horticulture at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And I want to speak with you about some of our work with Novozyme on a byproduct from their process uh, and its use in land application. Novozyme is a company that produces as a plant in Blair, Nebraska, a facility in Blair, Nebraska, to produce enzymes, primarily for the ethanol industry. And they use microbes to produce these enzymes. And when they've completed a batch, they kill the microbes off by adding calcium oxide to the mixture that denatures the protein and, and kills the microbes. So what we're left with is a solid byproduct that is a mix of um, the killed microbiomass and, um, and, the, um, and the calcium oxide and its reagents. Uh, reactants. And we call this lime stabilized spent microbial biomass and abbreviated to LSSMB. And I'll just refer to it in this presentation as spent biomass. You see a pile of it here and uh, uh, this is how it looks uh, when you get it from the plant and uh, you know take it to the field and, and stockpilot on the day of arrival and it changes a bit over time and we'll get to that. So what is it? It's primarily organic material again from the microbial biomass, uh, rather uh, easily decomposed biomass is what we would expect and it also contains some remaining calcium oxide and, and the reactants uh, such as calcium carbonate. On a per ton basis uh, and on a wet basis or as is basis, it contains about 50% water, 20 pounds of nitrogen, 8 pounds of phosphate, 1.3 pounds of potash, and 2 pounds of sulfur. And a ton contains about 500 pounds equivalent, egg lime equivalent. Uh, but we f have found this to be a bit variable. Uh, and it's neg as negligible or very low levels of heavy metals, so there is no concern about, about this. So we conducted on-farm trials in three locations, and uh, each of these trials had, um, I think, 56, 56 plots. Uh, three of these were in Washington County, and one was across the border in Iowa. In 2013, all of the trials were in corn, and in 2014, we had two in corn and two in soybean. So two were continuous corn, one was rotation. All were rain-fed sites and managed under no-till. Soil pH ranged from 4.9 to 6.7 for the sites. We did the application by weighing out the spent biomass in these five-gallon buckets. Uh, to get the right quantity for each plot, and then we hand applied it. Uh, and it was, so it was a rather gentle way of applying as compared to if you're doing broadcast application, say with lime application equipment. And that's important, and I'll get to that later. So the questions that we addressed were, what is the nitrogen contribution of the spent biomass? What is the... Uh, fertilizer nitrogen substitution value of it. What was the effect on soil pH? And we made other observations as you do when you start working with material, and these were very informative. The treatments included some nitrogen levels uh, with no biomass, no spent biomass applied, and these were to determine the nitrogen response function to see how the crop responded to nitrogen. And then we had our different spent biomass treatments, different uh, combination of these three factors. We had fall versus spring application. We had 2.23 versus 4.46 ton rates. Uh, and we had it with or without 40 pounds of nitrogen, or 36 pounds of nitrogen applied. So we have results from year one as well as year two. Here we see it for year one. In this figure on the bottom axis, we see N rate uh, ranging from zero to 200 pounds per acre. And then on the Y axis, the vertical axis, we see our yields. 
So the curve in, curves indicate the response of the crop uh, to the nitrogen. Uh, For two of the sites, there was no response to nitrogen uh, in 2013. Even though one had an average yield of 213 bushels of corn, um, it got that whether nitrogen was applied or not. So you only see two lines here rather than four lines. And the points in between, these are the yields uh, that um, we got with the different spent biomass treatments. And you see that and then we relate these yields to the uh, fertilizer nitrogen equivalent at the bottom here. And we see it ranges from about the, uh, what we got with the 10 pound, would have got at the 10 pound rate up to maybe 70 pounds applied. Now keep in mind that some of, this, some of these treatments did have 40 pounds of N applied. So using these results, we were able to determine that the fertilizer end substitution value of the spent biomass was about 4.5 pounds of nitrogen per ton applied, or about 11.3% of the nitrogen in the spent biomass. So that was the first year. In the second year, we had very good responses and greater responses than at year one at both of the locations with corn. And there we determined the uh, average fertilizer nitrogen response functions to be about 4.4 pounds per ton, very similar to year one, and about 10.9 or 11 percent of the total N applied. Um, and we observed in the second year that there was more N available where the spent biomass had been applied in the fall than in the spring. Uh, this might have been just coincidence. Um, if that effect would have occurred in year one, I would, would give it more weight. But since it did not occur in year one, uh, did occur in year two, um, I'm suspecting it was just coincidence. We were expecting much more nitrogen to be released by, from the biomass. I would have expecting at least 30% of it or 35% in just the first year, and maybe by f the end of the second year, 50%. But we only got about 22% over the two years. I'm guessing the reason for this is that there's still enough calcium oxide effect. And of course, that calcium oxide and its reactants are very closely uh, bound or located with the, the organic material, that this is interfering some with the microbial activity in the soil. and slowing the rate of decomposition of the organic matter and the release of the nitrogen. We found it effective as a soil, uh, uh, soil amendment for adjusting the soil pH. It did effectively increase soil pH. And the increase was about 0.1 pH unit in a 0 to 4 inch depth for each ton of uh, spent biomass applied. And, um, and it gave a relatively quick reaction, a quicker reaction than we would expect with the ag lime. And that was to be expected because this material is generally in quite small particle size, whereas with ag lime, we have some uh, quite sizable uh, uh, particles, granules out there. And again, keep in mind that this was no till, there was no incorporation of this spent biomass. For effects on crop yield, um, we did see the nitrogen equivalent effects already for the effects on maize yield. For the soybean, there was no effect on the yield in uh, the year two uh, crops. And um, we would expect eventually there would be a benefit from the reduced acidification due to the limine effect, but it did not yet occur or have a sufficient effect uh, uh, on the acidity to, to affect uh, uh, soybean yield in 2014. Uh, and generally, we can say there are no negative effects associated with the planned application rates. Some other observations. We found the material does stock well, stockpile well. In one case, we did leave some from the fall application. We had some remaining. We kept it until spring just to see how it would look. And what happens is it crusts over. And we can see that a bit here. Uh, here in front, and it's a bit broken up. 
but uh, where it's brownish, it's, it's a nice, let's say, half-inch crust maybe that forms over it. And that sheds water and also prevents erosion from the pile. So that could be considered a plus. It is important that the stockpiles uh, be well cleaned up because excessive amounts remaining in the field can crust over and interfere with crop emergence. And this is a case, one of the sites where it was not very well cleaned up. And we do see uh, uh, it's quite white and we see gaps in the stand and a little bit and poor corn performance compared to uh, where it was well cleaned. So that's something to keep in mind, that it does need to be well cleaned up. Other observations is that if during application you don't break up the lumps well, uh, they can remain, they also crust over and remain on the surface intact for some time. And we see that not so clearly in this picture, but uh, um, we did have some problem in that. That is, again, we did that application from the buckets, and it was a rather general, gentle application. Um, with me <coughs> mechanical broadcast application, we would expect that there would be sufficient impact when um, they're in application that it would break up these lumps. And it could be that the um, spent biomass would be more effective with uh, incorporation. So to summarize on the points, the number of slides here. First, land application of the spent biomass up to five tons per acre, and probably more, we just didn't go more than that, <clears throat> on an as-is basis or a wet basis, presents no problems to crop production. Uh, the nutrients applied per ton were, were about 20 pounds of nitrogen, eight pounds of phosphate, 1.5 pounds of K2O, and two pounds of sulfur. The nutrients are in organic form and microbial activity is needed in the field to break down that organic matter to release the nutrients. On average, about 22% of the nitrogen from the spent biomass was available during the uh, growth of two crops uh, with similar availability in both years and this was under no-till conditions. The nitrogen availability was greater with fall applica application compared with spring application in the second year, uh, but uh, this may have been just coincidence, as I said before. On nutrients, availability of nutrients other than nitrogen, we did not assess this, but judging from other experiences and the nature of the product, uh, I expect that the sulfur and phosphorus availability to be similar to nitrogen on a percentage basis of what's there in the biomass or what's applied. With potassium availability, we expect it to be available more rapidly and maybe as much as 80 or 90 percent with the first crop. The limine effect, of, uh, the limine value of the product varied considerably across the three samples that we had analyzed. And that does suggest that you do want recent laboratory results uh, before applying the material to have a good idea as to how much lime you're putting on or lime equivalents you're putting on. The limine effectiveness of the spent biomass per ton of material and on a calcium carbonate equivalent applied is expected to be more reactive than agricultural lime because of the small particle size of the spent biomass. Uh, the spent biomass should be applied with enough throwing force for the lumps to shatter on impact and uh, to get better distribution and thereby maximize the spent biomass effectiveness. Incorporation of the spent biomass by tillage is likely to enhance first year results uh, but probably not long-term results. The biomass does stockpile well with a surface crust that uh, forms and sheds water. Uh, the stockpiles need to be well cleaned up, well removed, uh, as excessive amounts remaining can crust over and inhibit crop emergence. Thank you.